Hello, uh, I'm Rafa Mantuk, uh, professor at the University of Cambridge. Uh, and in this short presentation, I will talk about the contrast sensitivity function of the human visual system, uh, what it is, uh, why we should care about it, and how we can model it as a five-dimensional function of spatial and temporal frequency, eccentricity, luminance, and area. Uh, I am presenting this work on behalf of my collaborators, Malika Ashraf, who is at the University of Liverpool, and Alexandra Shapiro, uh, who is at Met. Contrast sensitivity is our ability to detect low contrast wavy patterns, uh, such as those shown on this slide. Uh, those patterns are known as gabbros, and it is believed that the visual system is tuned to such patterns. Uh, they can be considered almost basis functions for our visual system. Uh, the assumption is that if we can characterize the detection of such simple patterns, uh, we can generalize it to complex images by decomposing complex images uh, into simple patterns. Uh, the detection of patterns uh, has been studied for more than 100 years, uh, but it's still an elusive problem with no definite solution. Uh, this is because the visual system is complex. Uh, it involves multiple mechanisms, uh, such as those listed on the slide, uh, that are difficult to measure and also they vary quite a bit between individuals. Uh, contrast sensitivity function, uh, or CSF, is a shortcut. It's an end-to-end -end model which attempts to characterize the response of the visual system for a given input without trying to model each individual mechanism. And for that reason, CSF is very practical. It directly tells us what will and what will not be visible. Uh, so why should we care about the CSF? Uh, the CSF is a building block of many applications that rely on modeling visual system. Uh, the CSF is used in image and video metrics to adapt to different viewing distances or frame rates. Uh, it's used to optimize display design, uniformity, resolution, and dynamic range. Uh, CSF is behind many video encoding standards, uh, such as the PQ transfer function used for HDR content. Uh, at SIGGRAPH Asia last year, we showed how CSF can be used to adaptively select refresh rate and shading resolution in real-time rendering. Uh, and before that, we use CSF to optimize images for displays of different brightness. Uh, algorithms based on CSF are already deployed in millions of devices, uh, so it's quite important to have a reliable CSF model. So what CSF models are available? Uh, probably the most popular is the CSF model of Barton. Uh, Barton's model explains contrast sensitivity uh, by the internal noise of the visual system, uh, and it has sound foundations. Uh, there are, however, two major problems with Barton's model. Uh, first, uh, it was fitted to one dataset at a time. Uh, so depending which dataset we choose for fitting, uh, we end up with a different model having very different parameters. Uh, second, uh, we observe that Barton's CSF uh, model uh, cannot explain the more recent CSF measurements, uh, especially for high um, HDR luminance levels. Uh, another popular uh, model is the pyramid of visibility. Uh, it's, a simplified, um, uh, it's a simplified model that assumes that uh, the sensitivity can be explained by logarithmic or linear relations. Uh, the main attraction of the pyramid of visibility is its simplicity. Uh, the main problem is that the predictions are valid for a rather limited range of CSF parameters. Uh, for example, for, for luminance, we could perhaps make predictions between 1 and 100 candela per square meter, but anything beyond that uh, range would be largely incorrect. Uh, in this project, we wanted to model CSF as the function of five parameters, uh, spatial and temporal frequency, eccentricity, luminance, and area. Uh, those are the parameters that are the most relevant for applications, especially in AR and VR. Uh, there's no existing well-established SF model and that accounts for all these dimensions. Uh, neither Barton's model nor the pyramid of visibility models all these dimensions. Uh, the main challenge is how to get enough data. If we were to measure just 10 points across each dimension, uh, each observer uh, would, uh, would take uh, one year uh, to measure the entire space. Uh, and this is clearly infeasible. Instead, we opted to reuse the data from published papers and datasets. 
Uh, we collected data from 11 papers, each containing different dimensions of the CSF. Uh, in the plot on the right, um, uh, you can see different projections of the measurement uh, of two dimensions, uh, such as spatial and uh, uh, temporal frequency. Um, the blank areas uh, are the parts of the space uh, in which we are unable to detect any, the, uh, any pattern. Uh, having the data, uh, we built explainable CSF uh, model uh, built on top of existing psychophysical models. Uh, this is to make sure that we, are, that we capture plausible interactions uh, rather than we just fit curves. Uh, one major distinction is that our model was fitted to all 11 datasets at the same time, uh, so that the same model can explain all those datasets. Uh, we did, however, allow for small differences between the datasets, uh, mainly because each dataset was measured with a slightly different procedure. Uh, before we dive into the details of uh, Stellar CSF, uh, let me explain a few key concepts behind contrast sensitivity. Uh, contrast sensitivity is our ability to detect barely noticeable patterns, uh, such as gabbers um, uh, shown on this slide. Uh, as the contrast changes over time from low to high, you may notice that the patterns of different frequency and luminance appear and disappear at slightly different time. Uh, this is because we are differently sensitive to those patterns. Contrast sensitivity is measured in two free or four alternative first choice experiments. In the experiment, an observer is shown two intervals, uh, A and B, uh, and is asked which one a contained pattern. Uh, the observer can either answer correctly if they see the pattern or guess if they cannot see it. Uh, therefore, the contrast is uh, therefore, when the contrast is high, uh, the probability of detection is 1. Uh, and it should be close to 0.5 uh, when the contrast is low, uh, because the observer has always a chance of guessing right. The detection threshold is the point at which the probability of detection is 0.75 uh, or any other assumed value. The detection threshold is typically represented um, as Michelson contrast, uh, which is defined as the amplitude uh, of the sign grating on which the GABOR is based uh, and the mean luminance. Uh, the sensitivity uh, is simply the inverse of the detection threshold. So how does Stella CSF models the five dimensions of contrast sensitivity? In the next few slides, I will focus on the most interesting relations uh, in the contrast sensitivity space and how they are modeled. Uh, it's rather obvious that larger patterns are easier to detect uh, so that the sensitivity uh, grows with the area. Uh, in the vision science textbook, we also tell us that the sensitivity drops at both uh, low and high um, spatial frequencies. However, the frequency of the peak uh, depends on the area of the pattern. Uh, it's more interesting to swap the axis uh, and look at the CSF as the function of the area. Uh, then we can observe that the sensitivity increases with the square root of the area, uh, the relation that was reported by Rovamo uh, and is also used in our CSF. Uh, the sensitivity increases only up to a certain level uh, known as the critical area. Uh, or the critical number of cycles. Uh, the critical area varies with the spatial frequency. Uh, CSF is a bandpass function of both spatial and temporal frequency. Uh, this is well visible in this plot. Uh, both frequencies are not independent, uh, so the temporal dimension cannot be modeled just by adding a term to the equation. However, it has been shown that spatial temporal CSF can be well modeled if we assume that our visual system has two temporal mechanisms. Uh, one mechanism that is sensitive to low spatial frequencies uh, and other that is sensitive to high temporal frequencies. Uh, if each mechanism is modeled with different spatial frequency and luminance characteristic, we can well predict existing CSF data. Uh, in this plot, uh, we show how stellar CSF models response at uh, zero um, uh, and 16 hertz. Uh, one mechanism shows saturation at high luminance, uh, and the other mechanism does not saturate at all. 
Luminance has a very strong effect on sensitivity, uh, especially at high luminance levels. Uh, the sensitivity is lower at low light levels, uh, at which our vision uh, is limited by both photon noise and neural noise of the visual system. Uh, but the sensitivity also drops at uh, very high luminance levels. Uh, the exact cause of this is unknown. Uh, the final dimension is eccentricity, uh, how distant is the stimulus in the visual field from the fovea. Uh, as the eccentricity increases, uh, the sensitivity drops um, and the drop strongly depends on the spatial frequency. Uh, the effect of eccentricity is usually explained by uh, the cortical magnification. The fact that the fovea is mapped to a much larger portion of the visual cortex than the paraphobia. Uh, we attempted to model the effect of eccentricity as cortical magnification, uh, but we found that it cannot explain some of the data sets. Uh, instead, uh, we found that a simplified relationship uh, from the pyramid of visibility can model the data a bit better and offers the advantage of simplicity. Uh, so how does TELA-CSF compare with other models? Uh, one difficulty is that only one existing CSF model uh, can predict all five dimensions of the CSF, and this is our work from a foveated uh, video VDP metric. Uh, all, other, uh, all others predict only a subset of those five dimensions. Uh, for that reason, we compared Stellar CSF uh, with the CSF that account for spatial frequency, luminance, and RIA only, uh, shown in the first column. Uh, then with the CSFs that also include eccentricity, shown in the second column, uh, and uh, finally uh, for all five dimensions, shown in the in the in the last column. Uh, as you can see, the prediction error for stellar CSF uh, is often half the uh, half as small as for other CSF models. Uh, to sum up. Uh, in this work, we created a large data set of contrast sensitivity uh, by merging existing measurements from 11 papers. Uh, this let us build a first fully explainable CSF model of five dimensions uh, that have been validated uh, on such large set of data. Uh, in the paper, uh, we also show how the model can help in multiple applications, uh, such as foveated rendering, flicker predictor, uh, or visibility metrics. Uh, those, however, did not fit into, into this short presentation. Uh, the data set, uh, the code for the model are publicly available uh, under URL shown below, uh, which you can also access using the QR code on this slide. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation.